What is up everyone? Welcome to part five of my network series. This has been a massively, massively um, anticipated video. I've got loads of people asking me when this one is coming out, so it is now, it is coming out now, so it's finally here. Uh, we're gonna get stuck right in. So today, the first port of call before we do anything, because a lot rests on this, uh, we're going to replace this guy. This is the Plusnet Hub 1. It is a VDSL modem and, of course, a router all in one. And we are going to be replacing that with the good old OpenReach modem. Now, if I was to move in, if I would have moved in a couple of years um, earlier, this is what I would have been given because those home hubs weren't out, or those uh, Hub 1s, sorry, I call it the home hub because it's basically a just exactly the same hardware as the BT Hub 5 or whatever. Uh, but yeah, when they had the older routers that did not incorporate a VDSL modem, they gave you one of these, an open reach um, VDSL modem, so that your fiber to the cabinet service would work and then they'd give you a normal router. So you'd have two little boxes. Uh, you can get these on eBay really readily. Loads of people are selling them. They'll, they'll set you back about 20 quid I guess 15 20 quid I can't remember how much I paid for this one um, but this will allow me to open up my connection to use any router that I want now in theory I could use the Plusnet Hub 1 as a VDSL modem you can put it in bridge mode and just use it as a modem but I've got no interest in using that hardware um, I would much rather just use the straightforward modem that has no bells and whistles um, I'd feel much more comfortable doing that so what we're going to do today is we're going to swap this guy in, replace the hub one, and we are going to use the Apple Airport time capsule as my router. Now that's kind of like um, a temporary solution. Hopefully sometime down the line I'm going to build a PFSense box, but don't expect a video anytime soon because that is, you know, way down the line. Hopefully the time capsule will work really well for now. Um, they're, they're super good routers anyway. Um, so, yeah, swap the modem in, use the time capsule as a router, and it'll become a lot more clear later on why there are several benefits to me swapping in this modem. Um, this is going in the rack for now, but there are several much, much, much more exciting things happening later than this, I promise. This is going to be a long one, folks. Strap in. If you don't like rambling, then I'd tune out now. Um, this is going in the rack for now, taking the exact same spot as that router, but it won't be for much longer. Let me just put it like that. And things are gonna get really exciting. I can't wait, I'm so excited. So let's hook all of this up. So at this stage, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we are gonna quite simply just kill the internet. Um, oh, hang on a second. First things first, let's test the speed of my connection using this guy. So I'm just gonna use speedtest.net for this and see the results because I'm not expecting the, spe the speed to increase, but I'm expecting, uh, I'm hoping that the speed will stay relatively the same. Um, so let's take a look at the results. We'll screenshot the results. I don't want to lose any speed, put it like that. Um, that would kind of suck. So we've got 68.74 on the download. And we're looking to be about 16 or so on the upload. My upload has actually slowed down by two or three meg in the last few months. Not too sure why that is. Okay, so we're looking at 68.74 and 16.17. So I'll screenshot that before we go any further. And um, yeah, let's unplug the router now. So we're just gonna kill it. Um, there's no real preparation I need to do. I'm not uploading anything, not downloading anything. We are just quite simply gonna kill it. And we're gonna pull the three connections out the back. This has been a nice bit of kit for a couple of years. I haven't had any major issues whatsoever other than a couple of restarts, but that's common with any router, I suppose. Okay, let's ditch this power cable to avoid confusion. And we shall plug in the new power cable. Okay, that's that finally in. Um, and one additional cable that we now need is obviously a WAN link between... Um, I'm not going to worry about tidying these cables up. This is not staying here. Um, obviously, we need a WAN link between the modem and the 
uh, and the time capsule because that's going to be the router. There's obviously a LAN link from the time capsule which we'll still need and which is still going to be hooked up but we'll run this fresh blue Cat6 up to the time capsule. Okay, that is in and now all we've got to do is hook up this modem and I've read the documentation. The WAN connector has got to be uh, LAN 1 on the modem and I'm also going to connect LAN 2 to my switch and that is simply for uh, monitoring. That's how you access the GUI in order to see what's going on. Obviously we want to connect to the phone line and we want to connect power and this should now boot up. So if we sit this on the shelf like that I'll be able to see the activity lights just while we set up and get things raring to go. There we go, powered up. So you can just about make out the activity lights up here. I am looking for uh, a constant, uh, the DSL light, uh, there we go, the DSL light has started blinking. I'm looking for it to be solid and constant, that is my main concern, um, just knowing that the modem can connect to the internet and then we are good to go. So while this is doing its thing, it'll probably take a while to boot up. This thing takes at least six, seven minutes to synchronize with my connection, so I'm assuming this guy will be similar. Um, we shall go over to the airport utility and configure the time capsule. So at the moment, this is my little network tree of airport devices. We've got the living room access point, the kitchen, which I solely use for um, uh, airplay. That's why it's not hardwired and we've got IMNCHQ, which is the time capsule. So let's dive in here and take a look at the settings. So there's a lot of this that I can't show and I'm gonna do some really crude kind of blocking out of the stuff, but I basically set the internet tab to PPPoE and put in my account name, password, and that is all I have done. In theory, the time capsule should sort everything else out. There is one more thing in um, the internet options, and that is configure IPv6 needs to apparently be link local only uh, from what I've read. So I've set that to link local only. We'll press save. And now the time capsule is gonna restart and we should see a green spot if it is able to connect and uh, find my connection. So over here we've got another good sign, we've got a solid DSL light which is fantastic. Uh, so that means that the modem was able to successfully connect to the internet or at least find synchronization down the line, uh, which is super, super good news. So now just waiting on the, ah, you can see there, time capsule just restarted because it lost communication through LAN 1. So let's go and have a look at the progress still rebooting where's my cuppa there it is knew i put it somewhere away from the electrical gubbins okay i am in chq is indeed green so in theory we should have the internet now but of course we probably need a refresh on the old um we're using a different router so i need to get a new ip address without showing you guys any kind of stuff on screen, I'll just unplug that and plug it back in. Should find a new IP, eventually. Hey, it sorted itself out and it gives us a new little diagram now, folks. So the new little diagram shows us that the time capsule is now our closest thing to the internet because of course it's our router, uh, which is cool, and now we have these other devices down here. So in theory, we should have an internet connection. Let's just give it a whirl with a random website. We shall browse to Tom and Music Store, and there we go, we've got an internet connection. So let's test the line once again and see the speed. Okay, so... Ah, okay, it's getting up there, it's getting up there. Yeah. Pretty much identical. It 
68.73, let's pull up the screenshot. So we've got 68.74 before, 68.73, 16.41, and 16.17. So we're looking at within the margin of error for both upload and download. We are up and running. That was incredibly, incredibly massively painless. Okay, so we are connected and I everything is working, which is awesome. Um, can't believe how painless that was. Absolutely wicked. The seller I got it from provided the instructions. He was like, plug this into this, plug, plug that into that. That's how I know about the LAN 1 and 2 thing. And uh, I was expecting more setup instructions, but there wasn't anything complicated. You have to do nothing, absolutely nothing to the modem, which is sweet. Um, so yeah, sorted. Username and password into the time capsule and I've got a new router up and running. Very happy. So this has kicked off the video um, with a brilliant start. And what I'm going to do now is explain to you guys what is going to happen for the next part. Um, but first, I'm going to do something pretty cool, and that is set up my guest network. Because now that I'm using a time capsule as my router, I can group all of my airport stuff together and set up a guest Wi-Fi network, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. They won't be able to access any of my shindig on the server side of things. Sorted. So setting up the guest network is incredibly simple. It's just a case of going over to the wireless tab in airport utility, uh, checking guest network, giving it a name. I've just gone from starship and guest because, you know, it's easy. Um, obviously a simpler password maybe than your password, you know, something you can tell guests really easily without too much confusion, uh, but also something that will still keep the neighbors from using your connection. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. As far as I know, you have to do this to each airport base station, but we shall see. So it turns out you do have to do it to all three, um, which is cool. I'm assuming that because I've done the same name and password, just like your normal Wi-Fi network, I'm assuming that it'll just show up as one network, even though all three of them are hosting the guest network. You should just be able to roam uh, so we will wait for the kitchen one to update. Oh, there it goes. And we will check on my telephone. Okay, so currently I'm connected to Starship, but we should also see, hey, hey, Starship guest. So let's check and see if it loads. So Starship guest is, hey, hey working. So let's do a quick test on this guy. Woohoo! Just as speedy. These are really great little base stations. They really are speedy. Oh, it's probably worth mentioning as well that these have been now officially discontinued by Apple. They're not making them anymore. Um, which is sort of the end of an era. They pioneered a lot of this stuff. Well, brought it to the masses like they do. And, uh, yeah, they're now not making them. So... Let's go back to Starship and what we'll do is we'll forget that one so that it doesn't automatically join up to the guest network. Okay, cool. So the guest network is up and running. What an incredibly successful little beginning. So it's been about a week, I think, and the internet has been excellent. It's been noticeably better, which is fantastic way less disconnects downstairs and I hope that that will continue through these upgrades. So today is Thursday, I'll get the date for you guys because I'm going to keep a little bit of a time record um, which would be nice. Yes, Thursday 17th of May um, and I'm really hoping that I can break the back of this project this weekend. Um, I've got a long weekend, four day weekend, but I won't be able to dedicate all of my time to doing this. Um, but I'm really hoping to get at least a damn good start. If I can get a solid 40-50% of this work done this weekend, I'll be really happy. Um, so I've been ordering stuff like crazy, getting all the bits and bobs in. Let's take a look at what I've got. So because you guys don't really know the plan yet, I've prepared a little PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> That sounds so lame, but there's a lot of information, so I want to present that to you guys in a minute. And a lot of this stuff will become clearer, but I just want to show you guys what I've got in at the moment. I've got the majority of the stuff I've ordered, I think. Um, plenty to be getting on with anyway. 
Um, I've got a box of stuff there, but I've got a box of cabling down here. So we've got a few different kinds of cable that we've got. Um, first of all, most importantly, I've got 100 meters of Cat6. I've got some 2.5 mil Twin and Earth. So we're going to be doing some mains work in this video. Um, and I've also got some standard three core power cable, which will only need a tiny bit of, but I ordered more because I wanted more for another project. And this is just some earth sleeving down here. Uh, so yeah, that's a box of a load of cabling. And as you can probably tell, this is gonna be quite an extreme project. So good fun. Uh, and then in here, I've got a few little bits and bobs. So firstly, I've got a nice short RJ45 to RJ11 Cat6 cable that I bought pre-made because I don't have any RJ4, uh, RJ11 connectors. This will be to reposition the modem, which is sitting right there, um, to reposition that guy right next to the front door. So that's why it's so short. Uh, I've got in here a load of patch cables of different lengths. And this time around, I don't know why, but I was just feeling that purple was a good colour, so a couple of different length patch cables. Uh, we have got some faceplates, so I've got a four-way uh, Cat 5e faceplate. I've got some empty Tesco food bag. Um, I've got a single way. I've got a load of back boxes, so I've got a double, a load of singles. One, two, three, four singles. Pop those there. There are, of course, surface mount back boxes. Uh, delving in, we have a twin Cat 5e faceplate. I've got a load of cable clips of different sizes. I didn't want to be left short, uh, including cable clips for the 2.5mm twin and earth cable. Uh, I've got a single gang socket switched. I've got an FCU. Switch, uh, no neon on that one. I've got passive power line, uh, power line, passive PoE injectors, uh, more clips, more little patch cables, all sorts of little goodies that are lurking in there. And I've got this guy. So take a look at this. Better still than delving into the box, there's a picture. Uh, this is a wall mount airport extreme or time capsule bracket. It's just a chunk of metal. It holds it nicely on the wall. You can screw it to the wall. Um, yeah, because we are wall mounting the airport extreme and that is something that we can get done today, I think. So I'm currently charging up my drill and then we can get to it. I've got loads of ethernet ends and I've got basically everything I need to get started with this project. Um, I'm very excited. Oh, hang on, I'm missing something important. I've got two vented panels for my rack because I am making a big rack change in a future video. So I ordered those while I was ordering all this stuff. It's not gonna be part of this uh, networking series. It's gonna be an addition of a new server to the rack and I'm gonna have a panel above it and a panel below it for maximum airflow in the very airflow restricted rack. So that's kind of nothing to do with the networking upgrade. But something that is to do with the networking upgrade is another UPS. This is the APC ES700. So this will get me 405 watts, which is way, way, way more than I need. But this was the smallest UPS I could buy. Um, and I'll explain a lot more about that in a minute or later on or sometime. So I'm gonna to present to you guys now a little PowerPoint of uh, info that I've collated to make all of this hopefully much clearer to understand. I'm not gonna do any screen recording or anything. I'm just gonna, it is just the way it is. So retire plus net hub, replace with the time capsule and open reach modem. That is one thing that we have done. Run four lines of Cat6 between the office rack and cupboard under the stairs. So a lot of this project is gonna revolve around the cupboard under the stairs. We're gonna spend a lot of time in there, or at least I'm gonna spend a lot of time in there because that's gonna be the sort of central hub of where all of this stuff is gonna connect. It, this, the goal of this is to be as modular as possible so that it's really easy to not only take out and you know, it's neat and tidy and everything, but also very easy to change because at the moment, this is a very bespoke kind of upgrade. It's it's very 
tailored to the equipment that I have now, but if the equipment changes, then it'll be really easy to change all this stuff because I'm socketing as many things as possible, making it very modular so that I can expand and adapt it in the future. So we're running four lines of Cat6. That's the big news. We're running lines out of the office, finally. Because as you guys know, the only lines I have going out of the office at the moment are via power line, which, yeah, we want to get rid of. Uh, create a network and power patch board in the cupboard under the stairs. So that is what the majority of those supplies are for. We are gonna create a bit of wood on the wall <laughs> with all of this stuff mounted onto it in a very nicely laid out way, all patched in nicely so that it is really easy to connect everything. I'll show you guys the layout in a minute. I've prepared that on a slide that's coming up. Wall mount the Airport Extreme downstairs. Currently the Airport Extreme is just sitting behind the TV. Uh, so yeah, we want to ditch that. Run a dedicated line from the cupboard to the TV. So that's the cupboard under the stairs patch board to the TV. So we get hardline networking behind the TV. I'll probably put a five port ethernet switch behind the TV as well, just to power all of those devices, or sorry, rather give network to all of those devices. Um, you know, it's not ideal daisy chaining switches, but the way it is at the moment, getting four lines out of this room down there is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I don't mind having a little switch on the TV, so that, that suits me okay. And then, uh, what else do we have? Move the Hue Bridge downstairs and mount it because currently it's in my office, therefore the signal for the Hue lights in the front room is not too good. Uh, we're gonna mount the Hue Bridge down there. So, let's take a look. Um, We've pretty much gone all gone over all of this. I made this before I recorded the first part of the video. So moving the modem downstairs, um, right next to the master socket, eliminating 25 meters of phone line should hopefully increase internet speed fairly significantly. So at the moment, the modem is currently fed by a big 25 meter Cat6 run all the way up the stairs, under the carpet and into this room uh, with a ton of slack on it as well. It doesn't need to be 25 meters long, but it is. Uh, so we're eliminating that run. We're turning 25 meters into whatever this is a meter so that is perfect and because this is essentially the phone line um, we should see quite a speed boost you know it could even be as significant as two or three meg on the connection so that would be sweet but if not this isn't really this isn't for speed this is all for convenience and reliability using the open reach modem unlocks the ability to use any router we know that hopefully a pf sense build in the future we know that but time capsule is perfect for now using the time capsule allows easy creation of a guest wi-fi network which we've done so awesome cool next up we have got the benefits of this entire upgrade so retires power line adapters that was the main goal we want to go hardwired ethernet as opposed to power line hard wiring is much more reliable ties into the first one better hue bridge signal obviously better wi-fi reception essentially with the wi-fi uh router where it is the access point the airport extreme behind the tv it's very close to a lot of devices stuff doesn't work too great it's crammed in behind the tv with loads of cables so hopefully by getting it on the wall, out in the open with nothing around it, no interference from other electrical junk, hopefully it'll do a much better job. Uh, TV setup can be turned off at night saving power. This is a big one because at the moment the power line adapter downstairs, I know we're moving through this quickly and I'm talking quickly, it's going to be a long video. The power line adapter downstairs and the airport extreme are currently plugged into the same extension leads that all the TV stuff is plugged into. So if I turn the TV setup, setup off at night, the Wi-Fi goes down so we don't have Wi-Fi upstairs or whatever. So it's got to stay on and it disconnects the power line adapters if I turn it off so it messes everything up. So at the moment, the receiver, the TV, the consoles, everything is all on standby down there. So once this is done, all of the networking junk will be away from the TV setup. Nothing will be powered from the TV setup. It'll all be powered from this guy, meaning that I can turn the TV setup off overnight, saving power. It's a lot safer because that's a lot of equipment to have, you know, constant mains running through it every single night. So I can turn it off very, very happy. And we're going to do some work to the mains behind the TV as well. Um, maybe in this video, but haven't quite decided that yet. The whole network, including the internet connection, will be active during a power cut. Not a big deal, but yeah, I got this more for the protection, um, but it is still very nice. If we do, now when I say power cut, I'm more referring to when I forget to top up the meter and we lose electricity. If I'm uploading or downloading, um, then 
it won't get shut off because the modem and everything downstairs will be powered by this guy and obviously the entire rack which is where the router is powered from the time capsule is powered off of the UPS in the rack so we're gonna have two UPSs working together to power the entire network the main benefit this is I know I said the power line adapters was the main benefit and it kind of is but this this was the thing that inspired me to really sort the network out and that is, the current TV disconnect issue should be eliminated after these upgrades. The power line adapters coupled with the less than perfect plus NetHub one is hopefully the cause. And I really hope that's true. I already mentioned that we're having far less disconnects. This, this modem router combo seems to be much more reliable. The internet connection seems to be much more stable. And by eliminating the power adapters, we should get a much, much, much better connection, connection between the rack up here and the TV meaning that everything is much more reliable, much healthier, and we shouldn't get any dropouts at all, no buffering, no disconnects, because I'm paying for a really good internet connection, the best internet connection that I can get in this area, and I need to use it to its full potential by having a reliable network at home. So, boom, that is that main benefit. Now, let's move on to a look at the patch board that I'm gonna put in the cupboard under the stairs. So, really simply, um, let's just talk power really quickly first. This is incoming mains power uh, from a single socket, which we'll then split off to a UPS. Now things have changed slightly. I wasn't gonna use a UPS to begin with, so I just uh, illustrated a four-way plug board, but we're now gonna be using a UPS. So the UPS will be powered off of this guy. And you can see everything is labeled. So the access point power goes through the wall to the other side of the wall in the front room. Um, that would be powering the airport extreme. We've got the Hue Bridge power going up to the Hue Bridge, of course. And we've got the power over Ethernet injector, which is there, the passive one. That's power. So power for the power over Ethernet will be for coming from this guy serving the modem the modem that's currently over there, but will be by the front door. You guys, this will all become clear. These four connections are coming from the office. So the, the drops from the rack in the office will terminate in these sockets. This is the wiring. So port one, POE, and then it'll go off into the WAN section, which of course will be to the modem by the front door. As I said, everything is gonna be socketed and this is purely patch. This is a patch board. So number two is going to be for the access point. Again, the ethernet cable for the access point will be terminated in a socket. Same goes for the TV. We're gonna have a single run to the TV. And then of course the fourth run is just a bonus. We'll get a dedicated run to the Hue Bridge, which will serve more and more light bulbs in my home. So it's nice to have it on a dedicated port. But the beauty of this thing is the Hue Bridge uh, I can always share a connection off the back of the Airport Extreme because I can obviously use the other two LAN connectors at the back of that thing, meaning that if I needed port 4 for a more dedicated cause in the future, such as running another dedicated line behind the TV or running a dedicated line to the Airport Express in the kitchen or running a dedicated line to the shed or something like that, then I could easily repurpose this. So that's what I'm trying to get at. It's a very modular approach. It, it, it's a very clean, easy to maintain setup. And I know this is all hard to picture at the moment, but we'll just do it. We'll just delve right in. Overload of information, but super, super cool upgrade. So I just remembered that a little while ago, before ordering any of this stuff and before beginning the project, I needed to make sure that the main aspect of the project was gonna work. And that is, of course, running the four lines from this room to the cupboard under the stairs. I've spoken in previous parts and in my other videos about how difficult it's gonna be because this is an extension and an exterior wall divides this room and the rest of the house. But I found a way to do it and this is the clip in which I test that theory. So a little bit of time travel to two weeks ago or whatever when I ripped up the floor to check that this was gonna work. So folks, just a little clip that hopefully I'll remember to insert into networking video part five. This is a little while before beginning recording that video so we're going a little bit timey why me might get a bit confusing so sorry if I repeat things or whatever. Um, this is in the planning process. I need to know what stuff to order. So before I went ahead and ordered everything for running my cabling, I wanted to make sure that it would be possible to go forward with this plan. Um, so what I've done today, and <laughs> it's fairly destructive and kind of disheartening because I can't continue with the work now that I've ripped all this up, but I just have to put it back and rip it all up again when I want to do it, when I've got the stuff and got the time. 
Um, what I've done is today I've just confirmed that my plan will actually work. And thankfully, after ripping up the a small portion of the floor, uh, I can indeed confirm that this will work exactly how I want it to. So the plan is not to rip up any of the flooring in my office. There's laminate on top of the floor and I'm just going to leave it as is. What would be much easier for me is running cable across the wall because I don't really care if I've got conduit in here. I don't care about hiding cables. So what I'm, this, is, this is the plan. I'm going to take cabling from the back of the rack up that corner across in line with the top of the door frame. I'm going to drill through and then at the other side of the door frame I'm going to, whoops, try not to lose any of those. Um, I'm going to come out and my conduit is going to run down here in line with the door frame so you'll barely see it. It'll just be thin little conduit here blending in with the wall and the door frame coming down, 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 down. I'll trim this bit of skirting board to accommodate it. It'll come down, 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 and I shall drill through the floor here and let my four network cables drop through there. Then I'll be able to fish them out under here. They'll come under, and this is actually perfect because all of the electrical wiring is going straight through there. So there's no danger of drilling into any of those. I can feel that there is no cabling under there whatsoever. Um, we've got a little sort of safety zone here, which is good. Um, hopefully there's enough space for me to do so. If I drill through a bit of an angle, I'll definitely, definitely get it. Um, anyway, get the four cables down, and this is the best part. I was fairly confident about that part, um, but I wanted to get them into the cupboard under the stairs. Now, you can see the staircase is right there, so this is very, very close, close proximity. Um, so I won't need that much cabling. And what I've done is I've gone downstairs into the cupboard, turned on the light, and to my absolute delight, if I just move the camera down into there, you guys can see that I can see light. There is light poking through, so I can fish the cables, four of them, under the pipework and out of the hole in the cupboard under the stairs. Now, there is some mains uh, knocking around here. Obviously, this is the mains for this side of the house. Um, so I don't really want to uh, get mega interference, but we won't really be running parallel to the mains. We'll just be running across it temporarily. So that should be okay. Uh, this is the existing line that is under the carpet. That's my feed that I've had for about two years now, since part one. And, you know, it's done the trick, but it's time to get something a little bit more permanent in and uh, also um, eliminate... I've probably spoken about all the good points anyway in this video, so I'm not going to say that again. But I'll quickly show you guys again. We're going to go under here, under the pipework. And as you can see, there is light under there. Light at the end of the tunnel, as they say. So that is perfect, completely perfect. So I'm now done here with everything I need. Um, it's just a case of ordering the conduit, ordering uh, some cabling and getting stuck in. So hopefully I can get this project underway next weekend and then get it out of the way. Um, I know a lot of you have been begging for this video. So anyway, I'm not going to talk too much in this clip because it's just a clip. I need to remember that. By the way, folks, I've just realised something. In that clip you just saw, it's the same day, by the way. In that clip you just saw, it looks like I've been extremely destructive and just ripped the skirting board off and pulled a load of plaster off the wall. I didn't even think to mention that during this clip. It was like that anyway. Um, I ripped hardly any more off. The skirting board, since we moved in, pretty much all of them in the house, um, apart from the kitchen, the kitchen's okay, um, pretty much all of them have fallen off um, and, you know, and or are loose. And this one up by my office here is particularly bad. Um, so it'll be nice when I do all this work, I'll be able to put the skirting on this corner back on properly. Um, but as you can see, the whatever they used to stuck the skirting on has just pulled off the plaster and you can see it's all crumbled away under the floor there. Um, that was exactly how it was before I got involved. So uh, yeah, I just thought I'd mention that because it, it looks super destructive on here. But I promise I was really careful with everything. Um, you know, this isn't massively my area of expertise, you know, going into floors and fiddling around in houses um, but uh, it's really fun learning and getting stuck in so yeah 
I can't wait to to actually properly get stuck in. And uh, just to show you guys, I am now back. <laughs> you can see there, it's fallen, but you get the idea. So it's all back to normal now, and I can get stuck in um, when that my stuff arrives. So the part we're gonna do today is mount the airport extreme on the wall. I think that'll be a really good start, uh, as well as my beginning of this video and everything that we've done. Uh, mounting that on the wall is about as far as we can kind of go because I'm missing two essential things. I'm missing, firstly, the bit of wood that I need to create the patch board in the cupboard under the stairs. And I'm also missing the trunking that I need for the office here and the down run. I could run the cabling before getting the trunking, but I want to make sure I get the right size and drill the holes in the right places so that I can conceal everything nicely. Um, so I don't really want to guess it because it's not as if I'm very accustomed to doing this kind of work, so I'd rather have all of the stuff here to begin with. So what we need to do in a minute is measure for the trunking. And that's kind of good because my drill battery isn't charged yet, so I need to fill the time with something. So measuring and ordering trunking is a priority. It's Thursday today, I want to get it here by Saturday morning. Because tomorrow, if I do some work on this tomorrow, I can create the patch board and then hopefully run the majority of the cabling on Saturday and then that's a really good weekend's work done. So this is the stuff that we need for the installation of the Airport Extreme on the wall. Firstly, we need this bracket, which is very, very nice, lovely bit of kit. This can also be mounted to the ceiling. Uh, however, you do need to purchase an additional acrylic shell for this bracket to hold the airport in place to save it from slipping out. So for mine, it'll be mounted on the wall like this and it'll just sit in there very nicely. Uh, you guys can see there are various screw holes and also a nice cut out at the back for the cabling. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to face the airport right at the back. Don't think there's gonna be enough clearance there for the connectors to go in, but I could be wrong. So we'll find that out. Um, for network, it's pretty simple. I've cut a length of Cat6 off, which will be plenty long enough because it only needs to go through the wall from the cupboard to the uh, to the mount. So this is just Cat6. I've got an end to crimp on it. And then for power, I've just got a standard figure of eight power cable. Um, but the interesting thing about this is because I'm gonna need to feed this through the wall, I'm gonna need to essentially just chop this guy off. So if I chop the end, with one hand, there we go. Now, of course, this is a molded connector, so it's completely useless to us now, but I was able to find something, mm, brilliant. <laughs> I, was be, I was able to find something that seemed to be quite a rarity, and that is a removable C7 connector, IEC C7, more commonly known as a figure of eight power connector. So this is really cool. I've never used one of these before. This thing is absolutely tiny, and that's kind of good for the low profile nature of this installation. Uh, so that means that we'll be able to thread this through the wall along with the Cat6. This will be the thickness, so it's gonna be quite a substantial little hole through the wall. Um, we're gonna pull that through, then of course, we'll crimp the ethernet connector on, crimp on, uh, crimp on, attach the power cable and bang job done uh i was i didn't need to fiddle about with anything else i wasn't going to chop up an apple cable i thought i'd stick with using a random other cable that i had so uh i've got this one but yeah that's all we need so just waiting for the drill i'm going to order some trunking and then we'll get to it so i've just ordered eight meters of trunking it's mini trunking 38 mil high 25 mil um deep or away from the wall I guess. I think I could have got away with a smaller size for the amount of cables but if I want to add more feeds then it's big enough so that's cool. Um, I think I get quite a lot more in there at a guess anyway this is all guesswork so I ordered eight meters got a fiver off because I was ordering so much um, and I also ordered some accessories for it. I ordered two right angles so that at the two right angle ends the first of which will of course be the feed coming up and then across, so it's a like, little clip on right angle, it means your cuts don't have to be perfect, which is great. And then of course the other right angle will be here. Uh, and I also ordered some couplers for the different sections as well. So now that I know the size, I can guesstimate the, uh, the drilling. So I didn't pay for the express postage. Uh, so it's four to six days postage, probably won't come this weekend. That is not 
not what's going to happen. It'll probably come next week sometime. But now that I know the thickness, it's going to poke out that much from the wall. So it's going to be pretty stealth. Well, st as stealth as trunking can be. I can continue with my work. As I said, I can guesstimate it. <laughs> so yeah, little, you won't even see that hole anyway. So little cut there, get four network cables through there. Job done. So that's ordered. Still on charge. Why didn't I do this overnight? So while we're waiting for that battery to charge, I thought we could dig into the UPS. Um, this is quite a bit heavier than I thought it was going to be. Obviously it's a UPS, so I knew it was going to be heavy, but it is mm, considerably heavier, at least 30% heavier than I thought it was going to be uh, for such a small unit. So I'm going to have to think of a better solution. I was going to mount this to the board, to the patch board, and just have it dangle off the bottom, but I think I'm going to have to... Oh yeah. Definitely going to have to give this its own dedicated mount um, on the wall because it is a big heavy box and I don't want it to fall on anybody's head when they go in the cupboard. So this guy is a very nice compact UPS. It is far more powerful than I need but perfect for future expansion. Now, one thing, I could have run a line of mains from the rack UPS all the way down into the cupboard under the stairs, but I decided against that because I'd need to use substantially bigger trunking because I'd need to put a divider in the trunking because it would be very... Um, it, it would go against the grain to run the power and the data cabling side by side. Plus, I wasn't really that happy with running that length of three core power cable anyway from the UPS all the way down pretty much to a different floor of the house. Um, I'm kind of guessing that that must be against some kind of regulation somewhere. And I, I didn't really feel qualified to do that. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't happy about doing it anyway. I couldn't think of any way to, to do it where I was comfortable. It would work just fine and it would be perfectly safe, but I still wasn't happy. So... I, I went ahead and purchased a dedicated UPS for uh, the cupboard, which is a much better option, I think. Um, so it's, of course, just got a standard 13 amp plug and four of these outlets are protected by the UPS and four aren't. Yes, these ones are surge protection and these ones are battery backup and surge protection. So anything on this side does not get backed up by the battery. So this label says before you connect anything, connect the battery terminals. So. That's not a problem, we can do that. Let's remove this sticker, which unfortunately is leaving a bit of a residue. Okay, there we go. Residue well and truly left. We've got some other stuff in here as well. We've got a driver CD, we've got a comms cable. Uh, this UPS is not going to be communicating with any systems. There's not going to be any kind of intelligence down in that cupboard um, yet. Who knows what the heck I'm going to put in there in the future. And an instruction manual, so I'll just bung those back in the box for now. Um, and let's figure out where the battery is actually connected. So, this is a brand new unit I believe, and I got a great deal on it. There are tons of these on eBay. This was way, way, way under 100 quid. So, you just have to connect the other terminal for the battery, and a little spark suggests that there is some juice in this guy. There we go. So, in theory, Hey, little beep, so battery's connected and working. Um, it'll need charging up. Let's remove that. And yeah, this guy is absolutely sweet. So that'll be going on the wall. We could also mount this on the wall today, to be honest, folks. That'd be a good use of time. Um, yeah, like I say, that's going to need some fairly hefty mounting, but... I think we can do it. So folks, here we are in the cupboard under the stairs and uh, I'm on the ladder, as you can see, and I am actually 100% in the cupboard. The door is closed, so thankfully it fits in here. It means that I can do the majority of this work without obstructing anybody else, which is good. Um, so in here is all organized now. I bought these shelves and boxes and whatnot, so that was the job I wanted to do before doing any of this. 
Um, so it really inspired me to organize the cupboard under the stairs and get everything sorted in little boxes and whatnot, so that's good. The mess you see here now is a lot of what I've just done. So uh, yeah, made a bit of a mess already, but this is the plan. So as you guys can see, up here there is a big hole and that big hole is where we saw light coming from when we were in the other clip, when we were under the floor. So that's where our feeds are going to be coming from. Um, and what I'm basically going to do is on this wall here, sorry about this recording folks, it's going to be very confined and difficult, um, so you'll just have to bear with me. But on this wall, this is where our patch board will be going. And I think on this wall, that's where I'll put the UPS. Now, conveniently, there's this bit of wood here, which is kind of solid. Um, I may rest the bottom of the UPS on here and wall mount it as you would, but this can take some of the weight if I can do the measurements properly. Um, so I'm going to start with the UPS, get the UPS on the wall here. And once that's up and out of the way, we can do the fun stuff because it is one massive, big, heavy lump. So I've drawn a little um, guide for the screw holes that way up. Bizarrely, there's only three on the back of it and not four. So one, two, three. Um, and yeah, we will go for that. I've got everything I need, I think. So yeah, let's just go for it. We have got the UPS on the wall. Um, I was going to mount it a bit more over here, but you can see that catastrophe there. Um, <laughs> those holes above were already there. Um, I'm not sure if they're actually screw holes or just random holes. Um, but the wall under here, as you can see from the surface, I really don't know what's going on with this wall, but this, this was crazy, absolutely crazy. Just bits of gigantic wall flying out of the hole. Um, just went mega, mega wild. Um, so that's that. I thought I'd shift over here a little bit, and over here was much more successful. This is solid, plus it is holding its weight just about against this bar. I think there might be like half a mil, yeah, there's a tiny bit of clearance. It's not quite touching, but you know, it, if I was to push this wood up a little bit, I might actually do that. What I might do is loosen these screws a touch, push this up, and then retighten and add another screw uh, under here, just so there's two screws under the UPS. I'm going to do that actually, just to give it a bit more support, but I'm pulling it down. It's not going anywhere, so that's good. The wall. Uh, this patch of the wall, something very bizarre going on there. Uh, this patch of the wall, much, much better. So there we have it. I have loosened these screws. I'm, I'm going to need to get another screw from upstairs to pop in here. But for now, I've loosened and retightened them after pushing the wood up ever so slightly, just a fraction of a millimetre, just so it's making contact with the bottom of the UPS. Uh, so that's on the wall quite successfully. Uh, let's talk quickly about power. As you can see, there's a socket down there. And that plug that's plugged into it at the moment is our fridge because there's no socket by the fridge in the kitchen, so there's just a big hole in the wall going through. Um, and the initial idea was to get power from upstairs from my rack and bring it down and add a socket, but as I explained earlier, I didn't want to do that in the end. So then my idea was, because I noticed that this cable was completely exposed and there was some slack on it, I thought it would be a good idea to split this cable and add a dedicated socket up here next to the UPS on the panel. Um, probably this side then, um, to plug the UPS into. So then I got thinking that this is probably a spur from the ring main, the socket ring main upstairs uh, and downstairs. It's one ring in this house. The kitchen sockets are separate and my office sockets are separate. They're with the kitchen. So it, you kind of got like house socket ring main and extension socket ring main. So I'm assuming that this is coming from one of those rings. Um, potentially the house side, looking at what way the cable is turning up there, but that's only a rough guess. I'd have to find that out. Uh, if this is a spur, which it more than likely is, then it is actually against regulations to add anything more than another socket on the end. So you can only have one socket on the end of a spur. Um, it's a double socket, but regardless, you can't add another single or double in the spur. So if I was to put a socket here, that's actually against regulations. and. There is a reason why. I'll explain that when I get up to my office later because it's kind of a confined space. But uh, there is a way, to, a way around it. I can change the spur from an unfused spur into a fused spur by using a fused connection unit, an FCU, which is that little switch upstairs. I'll explain all this better later. 
So my plan is to put an FCU up there, bring it down, add a socket, and then retain the fridge socket. But I was just looking at this, and it may just be 10 times easier to run this down the wall, clip it onto the wall, plug it in there, and job done. It's wired in. Um, but that's kind of the lazy way. I could do it properly. I could add its own socket. Um, but yeah, let's go upstairs and talk a little bit about electrical stuff for a moment. Uh, electrics, gubbins, because I'm, I'm struggling to explain things in here. I'm right next to this really bright light bulb as well. So I decided to uh, carry on a little bit. And as you guys can see, progress is pretty sweet. So I've got the power and ethernet through for the wireless access point and as you guys can see that is going to work out really nicely for power which is good um, and on the other side of course we have the bracket mounted and a nice hole in the back where these wires are coming through and uh, yeah I'm pretty pleased at that that is awesome. I'm just hoping there's enough height to slot the airport in. So there is a quick example of the airport extreme in the holder. Obviously I'm gonna to have to put it back where it was because um, I use the multiple ports to interface with everything on that setup, including the power line adapter and of course <laughs> the Wi-Fi. Um, but as you guys can see, the airport is actually facing this way so the connectors will come out this way you could in theory do it the other way but you'd have to you'd have to cut away one heck of a lot of the wall because the airport is actually flush to the back of the bracket so these are just sitting here uh, for now but they will really neatly come round the edge and terminate in the uh, in the ports of course just the single LAN port and a power connector. So that's really absolutely nothing. I can wire those up at a later date, absolutely whenever. Um, whenever I've got a free moment or if I'm waiting for other stuff to arrive, that's a good little job to do. And uh, yeah, I shall remove that guy, put it back. But that's just a quick example of how it's looking. And then this side, as you all know, we have got that guy on the wall and a nice hole in the wall that side. So uh, yeah, really good progress I think. So talking electrics for a minute, uh, I'll try and explain what I was trying to explain downstairs a little better. I think the best way to do that is with a bit of paper. So you'll have to excuse my rubbish drawing and uh, I'm not an electrician, but for those of you who aren't in the UK or for those of you who are in the UK, but don't know much about how this sort of thing works, I'll try my best to explain. So we've got, our consumer unit. So the consumer unit typically has, in most UK houses, um, a 32 amp, let's label it here, 32 amp MCB for your socket ring. Now this particular house has two rings, two ring circuits for sockets. Uh, one in the main house and one in the extension. So my office shares the sockets with the kitchen. But for the purposes of this little diagram, we will draw just one ring circuit. So the consumer unit, out of the consumer unit, down in an actual ring and back in. I'm drawing it nice and wiggly like actual cable. So on the ring, you have all of your sockets. Let's draw some doublers. Let's draw a single on the corner. Doublers, doublers. And this typically makes up your ring of sockets in your home. So you start at the consumer unit, go around the ring, and you end up back at the consumer unit. Now this entire ring is rated at a max of 32 amps as dictated, of course, by the 32 amp MCB. Now if you want to add to this ring, you can add in the ring or you can create a spur. And a spur is basically I should have left myself some more space. A spur is basically either from the back of a socket or from a junction box anywhere on the cable. A spur is a single piece of cable that goes to another socket that is not part of the loop. So as you can see, here is our ring. 
this is the spur. Now the ring uses 2.5 mil twin and earth cable, twin and earth electrical cable, very standard in the UK. Now the spur also uses 2.5 mil twin and earth cable. Now this is what I want to do. I'm assuming that the socket in the cupboard under the stairs is a spur and I want to add another socket like that. But as I draw on my mat slightly, that is not allowed. And the reason that that is not allowed is because we now essentially have a double socket here. So let's do this. And even if I wanted to add a single socket, it only takes a little bit of simple maths to work out why this is prohibited. So this cable here is the same cable that's used in the entire ring. That is 2.5 mil twin and earth. 2.5 mil twin and earth is rated at a maximum of 26 amps. Meaning that if I was to plug a 13 amp appliance into this socket, a 13 amp appliance into this socket, ignoring what I just drew, that is absolutely fine because it reaches the maximum of the, the cable, maximum that the cable is rated for in terms of current, that's 26 amps. So if I plugged in two big three kilowatt fan heaters or two kettles or whatever, that would be fine on a spur because it will never exceed the 26 amps. However, if I add another socket, I could in theory plug a uh, 13 amp appliance into this socket and that would then of course overload this section of cable, meaning that this section of cable could indeed catch fire, uh, which would be very dangerous. So even though that I know I've got my fridge on this socket and I want to put some very, very lightweight networking equipment on this socket, it's still against the regulations to actually wire it this way. And of course, I'm not an electrician, but it's nice to try and wire things properly. Um, so there is one way that you can get around this. So here's our ring and here's our spur. We're assuming that the spur is coming from the back of a socket, but of course it doesn't make a difference at all whether uh, it's a junction box or from the back of a socket. There's one way you can get around this and that is completely uh, isolating the spur by the use of an FCU or allowing for complete isolation. An FCU is a fuse connection unit and I've got one over here. So this is an FCU. It's basically just like a light switch, but you've probably seen these, you've probably got them in your own homes, um, especially in your kitchen or whatever for your dishwasher or washing machine. Uh, in here is a little 13 amp fuse, or you can put any rating of fuse in it you want, I suppose, but this is a 13 amp. So essentially by adding an FCU here, which is a switch with a fuse in it, you can add multiple sockets on your spur because if you exceed the 13 amp limit, if you go up to 14 amp, 15 amp, this fuse will of course blow, which will protect the cabling that joins the spur to the ring. So that cabling is rated at 26. This fuse is rated at 13, meaning it is gonna blow way, way, way before the cable reaches anywhere near its maximum current rating. So of course, if you fit an FCU, you can sleep easy knowing that whatever you plug into these guys will not catch your house on fire because this fuse will blow before anything will catch on fire, obviously. Now, you may be wondering if this cable is rated at only 26 amps, because this is the same cable, 2.5 mil, how do you get away with a 32 amp uh, MCB here and a 32 amp overall rating of the circuit. Well, that is obviously because it's a ring, the current is shared, the load is shared between the entire ring. So you've got two connection points to the consumer unit, meaning that you'll never have, or you really shouldn't have, the full 26 amp load on one part of the cable because you have another part of the cable joining the entire exact same ring back to the consumer unit. So it's rated at 32, you add a spur, an unfused spur can only have one socket. If you want to add another socket, you have to add an FCU as per regulation because you could easily exceed the 26 amp rating if you were to plug some heavy duty appliances into the multiple sockets. So that is basically it folks, and that is what I'm gonna do. Uh, but before I do that, I am gonna make sure that 
it is a spur that I'm dealing with. It may not be a spur. I, it looks as if it probably is. It looks as if someone has decided to add a socket in the cupboard under the stairs at a later date and they've just stolen some power from upstairs. Um, if that is the case, then that is absolutely fine and perfectly acceptable. But at the moment, it only has one socket on it. I want to increase it to two. Therefore, I have to add that FCU, which is this guy here, one of these. I hope that very probably rubbish explanation has kind of cleared things up a little bit. I'm at least trying to wire things properly. So it's just gone 20 past eight um, on the evening of the first day of this project and I am calling it a night for this one. Um, the latest updates, I've popped, um, hmm, cable clips, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting tired now cable clips across this bit of wood along the bottom. The reason I've gone right along the bottom is because I may use the remainder of this wood to guide the cabling from the um, the patch panel that will be up there. So that will be really tidy, I think, if I do it like that. Uh, I've also trimmed the end off. There was quite a lot of length. So instead of having the length bundled up, I decided to just chop it off. Um, so I need to pop a plug on that. As you guys can see, I've mounted a back box for the socket that will power the UPS. And as you guys can see, there is the cabling that will go both in and out of it. Nice lot of slack on that guy. And then, of course, I shall clip that back up to the uh, FCU up there. That's about it. Not much of an update since last time. Um, but I thought I'd just grab this opportunity to show you guys what I've done. So... Tomorrow is another day and hopefully some good progress tomorrow as well. Good morning, folks. It is Saturday today, uh, so it's the next day. And I started the day by experimenting with some of the different patch leads that I've bought to try and figure out if I can make this panel any better um, by being able to close the door without making all of my own custom patch leads which will take forever. And I think I can get it. I think I can get it to a stage where it is, um, it is fine. It's just about buying the correct patch leads. So I've retired the majority of these blue ones, which were always too long, um, apart from one that I have left here. And these purple ones seem to be doing the trick quite well. If I can spread them out even more, so get these ones over here, um, I think I will be able to close the door. Uh, these white ones, I could replace them with the same as these blue ones. That would be absolutely fine. Um, I kind of don't really care about colour and cables matching at this point. It's just about getting everything patched in. Because, of course, I will be using quite a lot of the ports when I run all this new cabling. So it's been quite a full day today. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm going to get anything substantially done. Um, but I did think of a thing, uh, a thing, I did think of a solution for this networking cable rubbish. I am going to ditch every single one of these patch leads, every single one. I'm going to get a brush panel. Um, I do have one somewhere, I can't remember where on earth it is. It could well be at my parents' house, because I've still got a lot of stuff there. I really need to sort through all of that. Um, but I put a brush panel there, I'll just get much longer cabling and shove it all through so if I get a nice poke out here and a nice poke out down there exactly where they need to be that is definitely what I'm doing if I can find a brush panel with a little bit of cable management behind it I'll go for that um, because then I can loop it around tie it down stuff like that but if not uh, then that's that's fine so I'm going to disregard that um, I'm not going to worry about that I'll order a brush panel and we'll do it later on in the video either this part or well probably part six because I'm thinking now that what I'll do is get part five out on Sunday evening and then carry on with part six. Anyway, there has been a development. Uh, my parents called in earlier for a quick visit and they delivered me a piece of wood. Now this piece of wood is actually quite special because this piece of wood was part of the stand that I had my turntables on in my studio at my parents' house. So unfortunately we had to dismantle that stand. I didn't really have any room for it um, anymore. Um, because of other things that I had, but it's nice that it lives on in uh, in a new way. So we've got this bit of wood and what I'm going to do now is 
kind of try and line everything up and figure out where I'm going to put everything um, because I really don't know what the best layout is. Okay, so I know exactly where I want to start. Um, I want to start with the four incoming connections from the rack uh, in the back here. So that's where I've started. Nice, plain, simple, easy. Um, it's going to be a lot easier for me if I get all of the back boxes on the board before putting the board on the wall because when I was working in the cupboard yesterday, I was facing this way and I was able to do stuff on the wall that was in front of me. But uh, with this board, I'm going to be facing this way and I've got to work to the side. And that's going to be quite difficult because obviously being right-handed, you're kind of twisting yourself all the way around and twisting your arm the other way to try and do the work. So if I can get the majority of the work done with the board down, then I can just screw it to the wall and then I'll be quite happy. So there's the back box for the four-way uh, ethernet uh, socket. So you guys can imagine how that's gonna look. That is the first port of call. <laughs> um, so now I've just got to decide where to put the other back boxes. So there it is, that is the layout. We have got um, the four in the top, then we've got the single, which is for the internet connection, that'll go down to the modem, then the double, one's for the access point, and the other is for the TV. So very happy with that. Um, that's a lot of prep done down here. The Hue Bridge can sit up here in this gap, and then this bottom corner naturally is a nice free area for cabling and whatnot to come along and be clipped and go off to where it needs to go and of course I will have a uh, PoE injector sitting where's it gone so here's the PoE adapter um, injector so that will be of course plugged into port one and maybe I'll need to yeah, I might need to run a patch lead, extend that, and then have this sitting somewhere else, I think, possibly. We'll see how it goes, but that's got to sit somewhere, and then the hue bridge can go there. Um, I'll figure out the hue bridge now, actually. I'll get the screw in place for it. So we can now finally visualise what this whole project is going to be revolving around, and that is this patch board. Um, so excuse the really long cables, I'll be using some shorter ones from the rack um, and this is obviously loose and stuff, you know, but all of the back boxes are secured and so is the Philips Hue, um, which is actually much more secure than I thought it would be. You can see it, the bottom lifts up a little bit and that's only because there's one screw hole. Um, it would have been nicer to have the two, but just the one, so that's okay. It's not going to go anywhere. You guys can now start to picture what it's all going to be about. So you can see the internet line is obviously the one with the PoE injector. I'm not happy about this. I'd much rather have this um, extended so that I don't have to have this dangling. I'd like to have this mounted um, if possible. And then I'll use a RJ45 keystone to uh, connect a patch cable from port one to the PoE injector. That way it'll all be much sturdier, I think. Um, the rest of it is super simple. You've just got patches between um, port two and three and this panel, which is the airport and the TV setup. So that just, that's a direct patch. And then a patch from here straight into the Hue Bridge. I am very tired, folks. I just can't speak. I can't form sentences. I can't remember words. But hopefully you guys are still with me. I know this is getting to be a bit of a long video now. Um, I was going to sling this on the wall tonight. But I think I will call it a day here. Leave it as it is. Put the Hue Bridge back by the rack. Because that way I'll be able to control my lights. And uh, yeah, we'll come back to this tomorrow with a fresh pair of eyes and a fresh brain. I don't know why I'm so frazzled today, but definitely not a good time to be putting this up on the wall. Um, but still, even though we've only done this today, this is a good bit of progress in my opinion. And it's very rewarding finally seeing the plan come together. So yeah, all good, all good. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday today. It was Friday yesterday. I can't believe how frazzled I was yesterday. Um, I've been editing as I go and I just edited yesterday's clips and my word was I frazzled. So apologies for that, folks. I feel a little bit more with it today. And today we are gonna sling this board on the wall. 
Um, I feel that tomorrow we're going to make more progress because, uh, as I mentioned, I'm just doing this as and when I can. Today is going to be quite busy. We're going to have a barbecue and stuff like that. So I've got a bit of time to do some of this now, but I've really got to do some cleaning and whatnot and, you know, just general house stuff. So again, another day of maybe not loads of progress, but I'm at least hoping to get the uh, board on the wall and try and work out some of the cabling in the cupboard under the stairs and then hopefully tomorrow we'll finally run some lines because that would be fantastic getting some lines over to the uh, over to the cupboard so let's go for it bit of uh, bit of wall mount action and then we've done the majority of the actual work in the cupboard which is great the rest is just um, crimping punching down and plugging in okay folks I'm really sorry I can't show you more of an action shot this is going to be pretty difficult. It's quite tight in here and I am facing the complete wrong direction to screw this thing on the wall. So I'm going to have to sort of get my <laughs> get my back end like resting on the top of this ladder and then kind of rotate my body around so that I can hopefully drill this into the wall. But this is what we're looking at at the moment. So this is the layout and we're hopefully going to get this guy up here. And once that is done, then I'll be a very happy man. So... I'm gonna just go for it, see how we go. Major success on the mounting of the board. And as you guys can see, I've cut out the necessary holes in the back boxes for the cabling. Um, so you can see there's two holes in this guy. This one on the left is the Wi-Fi connection coming out through the wall. And obviously I can just um, trim this to size and whatnot to make sure that it's all the proper length. Um, and then the other one is going to be for the TV that will come from this angle. Then we're going to have the WAN connector coming from here. And um, everything is going to be really clean, I think. So this went on the wall without any trouble. Um, it's extremely sturdy. I've given it a right good yank. So uh, just like everything, I keep yanking that. That's not going anywhere. Same with that back box there. Um, the only thing that is loose is this bit of wood. As you guys can see, this wasn't put here by me. This this was here already. But I want to use this, same as I'm using this one, to mount cables to. Very handy. So uh, I'll be getting a couple more screws and putting one here, one here, just to secure the uh, bit of wood in the wall. Nothing crazy, but just to hold a couple of cable clips. Um, but yeah, that is glorious, glorious progress. That leaves me a nice lot of space to... Uh, hide some slack up here. So if I go further up the ladder, ooh, come on legs. Um, I'm going to bring a lot of length down from the four runs from that hole up there. And I'm going to bring them all the way down, 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 down. Then I'm going to do the faceplate down here on ground level. Then I'm going to wind it back up, wind it back up, put the faceplate in the box, and then I'll coil the remaining cables. And what I'll probably do is put a hook in that bottom stair or put a hook on the wall or something um, just to keep the, the major slack because I want to keep that slack just in case I ever want to alter the setup in any way or if I want to move the rack in the office I'll be able to pull the slack from that bundle and uh, rather than keeping tons and tons of slack in the office I'll keep a bit of slack in the office most definitely uh, probably hidden in the back of the rack or whatever but rather than keeping a shed load of slack in the office I'd rather keep slack up here because it's not in anybody's way up there and it doesn't look horrible up there because nobody ever looks up there or whatever, you know. The door is all the way down here. So when you're coming in, you're just going to be looking at whatever item you want to take from the cupboard. You're not going to be taking any notice of a load of cable, but it'll be all tidy anyway. I just need to think of a hook solution for that. Um, so yeah, the next job on the list now, I think, is to sort the mains get the mains ran into this socket because then what i can do is i can charge up the ups and i can get this equipment powered up and then it's going to be the big guy it's going to be doing all of the cable runs from the office and the two cable runs that are coming out of this cupboard to the front of the house one for the modem and one for the tv setup uh, i'm kind of dreading running those two just because of all of the stuff in the cupboard here uh, all of this stuff is going to need to be moved because i'm going to need to drill through the bottom um, that back corner will be the worst. I'll show you how I'm going to run that cable and then hopefully I'll just clip them up the side and they'll come all the way up to uh, to this piece here. Luckily there's a gap so hopefully I can just poke the cabling through. But yes, that is a good step. That is on the wall and the back boxes are mounted. Everything is 
is good to go. So very, very pleased with that. It is Sunday afternoon and these are the things that I would like to get done today. I think this is a realistic approach, especially the first two and at least some progress on the third. Um, and then this is a decent weekend's worth of work, I think. So I need to get all of this done so that I can finish making the video and upload the video to get it out today. So fit the 13 amp socket and fit the plug to the UPS. So at least we've got mains in the cupboard. That's fairly straightforward. Terminate the access point cables. RJ45 and C7, that's at both ends of the RJ45, so one to the connector and one to the punch down on the socket. So that'll get the airport um, ready. All I need then is the drop from the office. And then run the modem line and terminate at both ends. So that's an RJ45 at the modem end and a punch down at the uh, socket end in the cupboard. So that's a decent list. And I think if I get this stuff down, I can comfortably say that I'm more than halfway there. That basically leaves the, the only thing left is the four drops from the office. So I'd say at the moment I'm about 35% there. Um, if I do th these three things, it's creeping up to a 55-60% completion of the project. So um, that would be great to get those things done. I'm going to start that right now. Let's go down and do this stuff, at least try and do this stuff see what the family's doing because I'm gonna have to knock the electricity off for about 10 minutes while I fit this socket. So there's the single socket in place and you may be wondering where on earth is the FCU? Well I made a discovery. Um, I'm gonna overlay a picture of my consumer unit now. It seems that the cupboard under the stairs was always on its own circuit which is fantastic so I've just added another socket to that radial which is absolutely brilliant and actually better. So that's on a 16 amp MCB uh, on the consumer unit. So that's just this new single socket for the networking stuff and the existing double socket that was down there. I've checked, the fridge is powered up, so everything is all good. Um, just got to pop a plug on this guy now and I can charge up this UPS. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, I haven't clipped the cable back yet, but we can do all that on the uh, tidy up stage, I guess. So uh, yeah, pretty painless. It is boiling hot in here, it's a hot day. So I uh, don't wanna spend too long in here, but we've got a cable run to do as well. So that's uh, that's some work that's not in the cupboard. So folks, not to keep going on about it, but it is absolutely boiling. I think I'm gonna call it a day today. I've made some decent progress, not as much as I would have liked. Haven't run the line from the modem, but that involves taking off all the skirting board and drilling big holes through the stairs and whatnot, and I just haven't got it in me today. I am boiling and tired, and I'm gonna cook Sunday dinner. So um, yeah, the progress that I have made is we have our socket on there with just one side connected to the access point. Of course, any messy wiring that you see will be tidied up eventually. Um, I've put a plug on the end of the UPS, so that is now powered up and charging, which is fantastic, and it does work. Check it out. So it does exactly what it's meant to do. You heard it click back on, probably. And uh, that's not the only thing. I've also wired up the connectors on the other side of those two wires. I'll insert a picture right here, rather than going outside. Um, so yeah, that is done. The airport is just in there for illustration purposes only. I've moved that back to behind the TV um, because of course there's nothing on the other end yet. There's no patch uh, up to the office. So I'd say I'm about 40% complete with this project folks. And I am absolutely, yeah, just I've reached my limit now. I'm tired, but anyway, I'm gonna call it a day. As I said, I hope you guys have enjoyed part five. Stay tuned for part six, which should be up next week.